everyone. Thanks for joining me. I'm photographer and cinematographer Drew Geraci. And today we're chatting about editing. And in the 21st century, it hasn't really evolved much from where it was 100 years ago. I'm really still waiting for the day that we get to edit like Tom Cruise did in Minority Report. But until then, Blackmagic released one of the most compelling pieces of hardware to date that did help editors of any level increase productivity and precision when it comes to the editing phase of production. We're talking about, of course, the DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor, which I've got right here. And for the last four months, I've immersed myself in this new piece of hardware. And to be blunt, I think there's a lot of functionality gained by using it, but you also lose some in the process, and we'll get to that in a little bit. To jump right in and maybe save you some time with this video, the Speed Deck isn't necessarily meant for everyone or every job. Uh, it thrives in cut mode, and in particular, it does one hell of a job when you're trying to sift through countless hours of footage looking for all of that beautiful prime A-roll that you'll eventually want to edit with. In particular, I absolutely love the shuttle jog wheel. It feels extremely professional, it's tactile, and it's accurate as f And when you're trying to make that perfect cut, it does it without any stuttering or playback issues. That is unless your system can't handle the footage you're working with, and this was one of my fears when I first started using this hardware. My current system has absolutely no issues playing back footage of any flavor as it's a Threadripper Pro with 32 cores, 256 gigs of RAM, and it's operating with two dual RTX 3090s. What happens though when you use a computer that doesn't have overkill hardware like mine? Well, you get some stuttering and playback issues. I don't think it's a direct result of using the speed editor, but it does bring to light some of the limitations that the unit has as a whole. The best way to fix this issue though is by creating proxies and editing with those instead. That's gonna give you the best smooth this playback. In terms of layout, the speed deck is set up for multicam support, so those buttons take precedence in the center of the deck. If you don't do a lot of multicam projects, these buttons are pretty much useless to you, um, aside from the start and play button. You then have the actual edit portion, which then allows you to set your in and out points, add cuts to already laid down footage, as well as adding transitions and toggling between sources and timeline viewports. This is the part where the deck really isn't meant for everyone or every project. If you're not doing a multicam edit, then a solid 45% of the speed editor is completely useless to you. And since Resolve doesn't allow you to remap key bindings yet, which I think is pretty funny, it makes a lot of the functionality of this deck pointless. If you do multicam projects though, this deck truly comes in handy and makes toggling between cameras a breeze. If you're a keyboard and mouse user, you may find working with the deck a bit cumbersome because technically you shouldn't be using either when you're using it. I found though that the best combination for me at least is the deck with the mouse and then moving the keyboard out of the way completely. If you could remap some of the keys on the deck, then it would definitely be better and it's something I hope Blackmagic allows for in the future. I'm not gonna go into all of the features of the speed editor, but I will say one of the biggest advantages I see of using this is in tandem with my laptop, especially when I'm on the road. Uh, you can connect it via USB-C or Bluetooth, and it makes editing a real treat when you don't have a full-size keyboard at your disposal. Uh, the unit is also very travel-friendly and can easily be transported in my laptop bag without any real hassle. Here's my list of the good and the bad things that I've found while working with this unit over the last four months. For one, it's great cutting large amounts of footage, it does a great job smoothly scrubbing between uh, in and out points of your footage. It's also incredibly precise when it comes to cutting. It's great for mobile editing. The, it's a really comfortable layout um, if you are just using the deck by itself, and it works in both cut and edit mode flawlessly. Some of my least favorite things about this unit though, you can't remap any of the keys, which I do think is really silly, but hopefully Resolve will fix this in the future. There are some slow stuttered playback issues depending on what codecs you are using and what kind of hardware you have. And it's really, in my opinion, not worth buying this if you don't do a ton of editing. Uh, your mouse and keyboard will likely be faster, um, and if you're already using those, then there's really no reason to buy the Speed Deck. You really can't use this in tandem with your keyboard and mouse because it's not meant to be used that way, and it'll actually just add more time into your workflow. The last thing is it has really limited functionality outside of the cut and edit mode, so that's kind of a downside for me. Overall, I really like the deck, and for the price, since it does come with a full version of the studio version of DaVinci Resolve 17, it really makes it a no-brainer to get, though. Um, if you don't have DaVinci Resolve Studio yet, then do yourself a favor, buy the Speed Editor and get a free copy of the studio version, or if you already have a studio version, sell it and get the Speed Editor for free, basically. If you have any questions, just plop them down in the comments below, and I'll be happy to answer them. As always, if you enjoyed what you saw, please like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps motivate me to put out more content, and we all like new content, right? Have a great day and happy shooting.